Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, what you're looking at here is the back of the Cummins 4BT. And I just have some uh, ARP bolts kind of threaded in there. That's what we're going to attach the flywheel with. And uh, <clears throat> uh, while it was warm out, I got our uh, SAE adapter painted uh, same color as the engine. I've got that bolted on with some uh, high strength bolts and there's our ARP bolts ready to go and right here you're getting a view of the completed transmission and everything I just moved it over here with the engine hoist uh, I've had this filled up with lube now for uh, three days checking for leaks I did have a leak uh, on the 465 on the lower bearing there's just a sheet metal shield that covers that I thought I had it good uh, it did drip out of there and I had to remove um, my housing um, clean all that down uh, pull that out and uh, and reseal it um, don't be afraid to use a little uh, uh, RTV there, some uh, some uh, right stuff, some Permatex right stuff, um, and I have my transmission lubricant and everything. Uh, it's safe for yellow metals. Uh, it's not thin. Uh, don't go putting 80, 90 uh, rear end lube in here. Uh, your transmission will never stop spinning. You won't be able to shift good. Uh, it'll attack your blocking rings and stuff like that. I do have the correct lube for these and you can see we've got our uh, shifter there, PTO shifter. So it took quite a bit of lube to fill that guy up. This is a big hole case, the transfer case. On the big hole cases, uh, this is where your pivot for your clutch linkage would go. Uh, on big hole cases, that's hollow right into the case try and get you in there hang in there okay and with it clocked so much um, this becomes my uh, lubricant level indicator right here when you when you clock it to the third position and I fill it through here so uh, there's a lot of lubricant in that transfer case because it's it's on such an angle okay so, when you fill it that high, here's your vent, okay, your vent's usually down here. When you fill it properly to the right level, the lubricant is just a hair under your vent. So I just cut and welded a piece of pipe and extended it up here. Uh, it's not in the way of anything, any of the shifters or anything like that, but you do have to extend that. Um, that's critical otherwise your lube is going to just pour out your vent and again same lubricant in here uh, I've been selling this lube forever it's is fantastic um, if anybody's interested in the correct lube uh, for this stuff um, I'll just email me and I can send you a list and <clears throat> same thing for the overdrive we got the overdrive adapter we've got the, the PTO shifter uh, it's easy just to pull the stick out and, and fill up from this end. So I filled this up. It ran into here. I got plenty of it in here. Uh, I, I'm real close on everything, but once everything is <clears throat> in the chassis, uh, we'll check it again. Now I've got to paint this first. And then there's our six groove pulley for the welder. And, and this will go on after. I want to make sure I get paint inside there. And, and on there so we'll put some epoxy primer on that and then, and then go ahead and stick that on <clears throat> so and, and the same thing with the transmission much much easier to fill it through there I'll just pull your stick out and then when it runs out your fill plug here you know you're full okay so like I say the only leak I had was right behind here 
and, and it was it was just dripping out. So I took care of that. It's been three days leak free. So <clears throat> we're ready to put the flywheel on. And I'm gonna get this mounted. You see I have a milled out here. A milled out right here for my fork. I had to use an adjustable pivot. I could not use a factory style. Uh, so that's got a lock nut on it there. I, I have it adjusted to where it, I'm pretty sure it's going to work out. Okay. Uh, this is long. It's threaded. It sticks out the back. On a lot of transmissions you could leave that sticking out the back and you can, you can adjust it. Uh, I had to get real close because let me get you around here. You see way in there? Um, there's no room for the, you know, it would stick out like two and a half inches. Um, so I had to dial everything in real close, cut it off. I put some uh, uh, right stuff in there so it doesn't, uh, water and junk and crap doesn't get in there and, and screw it up. Um, so that's sealed. And the fork will go on that now. And we'll try it out. So I'm going to put this flywheel on, I'm put the flywheel on, the clutch on, put transmission in, uh, operate the clutch, make sure everything works. I'll take everything back apart again. We'll take this whole assembly and uh, stick it in the paint booth, hang it from the beam, and, uh, and put a, a nice paint job on it. So everything from this point back is going to be black. Uh, we'll end the Cummins beige right here. And we'll take off with black from here to the PTO. I like to paint the overdrives. A lot of guys like to leave these. Uh, they do oxidize over time. The aluminum gets kind of white. And, and I don't like the look that these get. Um, I've got them in a few Jeeps. And... Uh, I just don't like the way they, they change color. So that's all going to be black. The whole thing's going to be black. We'll paint our, our mount. And, um, and that's about it. But uh, let's get busy and get that flywheel on. Uh, it's kind of tight here. I got everything on the cart. Uh, I'm trying to get everything lined up. It's, it's kind of difficult, you know, getting everything put in there by yourself. But. I'll give it my best shot see if we can't get everything done. So hang in there. We're going to put that flywheel on next. Okay, here's the flywheel bolts. And what you're going to need, I take a little bit of acetone and I clean them all first and just let them air dry. Uh, there's a little coating on them from the, from the package, you know, from ARP. You get a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know if it's from the machines or just oil coated, but I like to uh, like to clean those with acetone first. Um, the threads they get some Loctite. Um, it's the blue stuff, the two two forty two, and then between the head and the washer. A little pit, a little bit of the uh, ARP uh, Ultra Torque washer is flat on one side, and it's got a little recess on the other side. And the recess always goes up to make way for the the root right here. Um, so just a little bit of uh, just a little bit on the washer. Hope you can see this. Sorry, just a little bit on the washer. Just so that the bolt head, when you're tightening it, uh, that can slide. Just, just need a little bit in there. I get a lot of questions about about the flywheel bolts. I don't know why, um, but uh, these go down to. 120 foot pounds, and they're um, and they're supposed to have the blue Loctite, the 242. Um, you call up ARP, they'll tell you the same thing. Uh, that's what they want for their bolts. They want the the Loctite, 
and they want the ultra torque under the head um, the ultra torque is a super good molly lube and uh, you get you get true torque with that when you when you have that on there you're not fighting the the friction from the bolt and the washer on the flywheel okay so we got those done now if we look over here all right there's our flywheel now because this is so recessed down in here I had to make a uh, a custom pilot bushing okay there's a step in here and you can see I have I have one diameter I have another diameter and then we need a shoulder on there uh, to pick up the the uh, input shaft okay so I got that shoulder and that will that will press in there That'll press right in there, and uh, I'm not going to put it in yet. I'm just going to make sure I'm going to put the flywheel on and check my dimensions one more time before I press that in. And um, hang in there, there's a lot to do. Uh, <clears throat> when I made that, um, this diameter here, if you just get a generic off the shelf GM pilot bushing, that diameter in there can be all over the place. Um, right there that's my reamer that's a 592 reamer I like to make that whole 592 uh, if you buy a pilot bushing sometimes they're 594 sometimes they're as big as 598 uh, I don't like it that big um, the input shaft is is uh, 588 and this is 592 so we have a four thousandths um, play in there and that's all you really want uh, so so just check that out because you don't want any you don't want that moving and wearing out your front bearing you know if you don't have to so when I make them I always do 592 ream and uh, if all my calculations are correct we'll put this flywheel on we'll send that down in there and that will pick up full depth you know full depth of our uh, input shaft so, put your bolts in, a little bit of lube under the head, a little bit of Loctite, 242, 120 foot-pounds, and you'll be all set. So, this is a heavy flywheel. I'm going to try and muscle it over there and get it uh, on the back of the crank and torque it down, and I'll be with you in just a little bit. Okay, guys, flywheel's on and cleaned. Pilot bushing is in there. I did some careful calculations and uh, uh, the, the stick out that I have here uh, I made this full diameter here and uh, I got a 352 stick out and that will give me full engagement on the input shaft. Um, <clears throat> now when you, uh, a lot of times when you bang in smaller pilot uh, bearings you know the the bronze ones and stuff you have to ream them again this one's so big I checked it with the reamer I didn't have to ream it again but when you're putting little ones in you have trouble getting your transmission and sometimes they they squeeze down enough where uh, you gotta ream them after you install them so we're gonna try the transmission for the first time and like you know this is a, uh, a 465 and uh, if you guys are anybody's doing a 465 to their 4BT, um, there's a lot of guys out there selling um, 4BT uh, 465 flywheels, used ones. Uh, I've seen a lot of them uh, cracked and uh, and overheated real bad. Um, and uh, guys are selling them for you know six seven hundred dollars, and then you got to have them resurfaced. Um, no need to do that. This is a brand new flywheel. This is from First Motion Products, uh, <clears throat> and this was uh, this was like five hundred dollars delivered to my door. So, don't waste your time dealing with a lot of those shady uh, diesel dealers um, trying to sell you. You know, they say, "Oh, it came out of a bread truck. It's an original flywheel." 
uh, they're not worth it. They've got you know millions of miles on them. They're uh, um, when you put them, when you go to resurface them, they're cracked all the time. They're they're blued. Um, don't buy a used flywheel for crazy money when you could get a brand new one uh, for about 500 bucks. Um, <clears throat> pilot bushing, like I say, um, I had to make that because I'm not going with the uh, the quick draw setup that um, uh, that Chad McKinney is selling. Like I say, I I tried to get that for almost eight months never heard from them um, and you know it's guys like that that I that kind of soured me on the whole diesel group but um, he's terribly expensive and he's another one selling these used flywheels for much more than you can get a, a new one for um, and his flywheel the way you gotta operate the clutch linkage it's like a later Jeep where you're pushing your um, your throw out bearing forward I'm sticking with the original Jeep style where you're pulling on the fork which is pushing the the, uh, the throw out bearing um, it, it's just my preference it's just easier I don't want a slave cylinder I don't want a hydraulic clutch I don't want anything like that I want a strictly mechanical clutch and uh, and that's what I'm doing here so uh, I'm gonna stick the clutch on there actually let's walk over and look at the clutch this is just a what would be called a, uh, a GM heavy duty you know for towing type clutch uh, I've had center forces I've had you know a lot of different clutches I've had some haze I've had all different kinds of clutches I like the feel of a factory clutch I don't want to get in a Jeep and, and, and my leg be aching after a day of driving or even just taking it out for a little bit and you got a terrible heavy clutch on there um, you know the engine's only engine's only 140 horsepower. Uh, it's not like we're making 800 horsepower. We need to grab a, with a center force or a dual friction or something like that. So do yourself a favor and just get a good factory style clutch. I like the diaphragm style here instead of the three finger. Um, and it comes in a kit. It's got a decent throw out bearing. This is what you'd get for a pilot bushing in a factory setup. You can see how different the one is that I had to make. So um, let's get this put on there. And when this will go, this is going on for the last time. Got our ARP bolts again. 45 foot pounds on these guys. A um, little bit of ultra torque. It's up to you if you want to use the 242 or not. I like to put a little bit on there. I don't like to ever have to wonder if my bolts are loosening. So same as uh, same as we did on the flywheel bolts, 242 ultra torque, and uh, this is finally going on for the last time. And then we'll try the uh, the fit up of the whole transmission assembly. So hang in there with me, and uh, we'll keep moving along. Okay guys, after a bit of wrestling around with this thing, you know, I got the cart on wheels so it was kind of moving all over on me. I now have the whole assembly bolted to the 4BT and we have exactly 795 thousandths of engagement in our pilot bushing. That is perfect. It's uh, just about the whole um, uh, snout of the input shaft which is what I wanted uh, it's not interfering the splines don't hit it or anything it's not interfering or anything uh, the perfect engagement the adapter I made fits perfectly and we're checking out the clutch right now I've got a bar in there I haven't tried it yet but I just want to see what kind of throw I got and uh, and see what's going on there so I've got a bar on the fork. Try and get you in there. Got a bar on the fork, and right now I'm running everything through the through the PTO. Okay, right now, if you can see that, you can tell our clutch is engaged. Make sure you can see all the way back there. Okay, this is 
full clutch engagement. Uh, let me see if I can do everything at once. I'm going to pull the fork back. Okay, right there she let go. And the clutch is freewheeling now. Pull that back. Oh, it bit right there. Right there, it's biting. So, our clutch is working perfectly. Our fork, our cutout, and our throwout bearing are working as they should. Uh, I may extend the bolt out just a little bit. Uh, I'll show you what I got here. I might extend it out just a little bit. I may want that fork a little further that way. I'm not sure. It's working now. I don't have it fixed in the ball yet either, but um, it's working. I know our dimensions are right. Um, so I'm happy with that. Our engagement in the clutch disc is exactly right. Um, and it's been a long road, you know. It's uh, It started with just a big chunk of aluminum. And everything is fitting perfect. And the whole assembly slid right in. Uh, the machine work was right on the money. Everything slid right in. It went into the splines. It went into the pilot bushing. Um, I couldn't be happier with it. Uh, we are now, like I said, we're now leak free, so I can disassemble this and paint it. Um, the one area that always leaks, always a pain, is your speedometer area right here. We got a lot of lube in here because of the angle, and that wants to seep. That's why I got part of a broken cable on there. Um, but there she is. I only have a few bolts in here. We'll, we'll bolt this up solid, you know, afterwards. And uh, pop it out of gear. And there it is. So, with careful machining, we have this fit to the SAE housing perfectly with that step in there. We've got the right dimensions. We've got full engagement in the pilot bearing. We've got full engagement in the clutch disc. Uh, you know, if you take your time, uh, that's exactly what you'll get. So, the transmission is straight, it's flat, it's not like you get one of these 465's out of a bread truck and it's got a huge lean to it. Um, I just didn't want that. So, this is what happens when you decide to do things on your own and uh, make what's not commercially available. And, like I say, I'm very, very happy with it. This is our whole right here where we're going to pick up the flywheel teeth for our tack so there'll be a, there'll be a tack in this in this rig and uh, I'm going to go off the flywheel teeth some guys go off the alternator I'm going off the flywheel teeth um, we've got our PTO for a front winch if we ever find one again if anybody has a PTO winch let me know we've got our rear PTO for the welder with the six groove pulley that's going to come up through the floor. Got our overdrive linkage in there. We're ready for our custom drive shaft to come off there. The front one is going to be a little interesting. We've got to we've got to get by a lot of stuff here, so it's going to it's going to drop down on an angle pretty good. But uh, we'll get it in there. So. Big accomplishment today. I finally have everything together and now we can work on the paintwork. So that's all I have for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing all this stuff come together. Uh, any questions just uh, shoot me a comment below. Um, hit the subscribe button if you like the video. Uh, hit the like button and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. So thanks for watching. Everybody stay safe out there.